the final major data type is a set. And these are also simple containers, just like the other containers we have seen. But this one is kind of different and special in some way. It would look like this. We still have curly brackets, like in the dictionary, at the start and at the end. And inside, we have values separated by a comma. So far, all of this is really straightforward. The only difference compared to a dictionary is we don't have keys, we just have values. Where a set becomes unique is that every single value inside of a set has to be unique and any kind of duplicate will be deleted. Once more, I have a completely empty Python file and I want to create a variable, let's call it my set. And here, I need curly brackets and inside of those I want to have some values I want to have separated by commas. Once I have that, I can print this variable, run the code and we can see we have some kind of set. You know it's a set because we have values surrounded by curly brackets without any kind of keys. If they had keys it would be a dictionary. The one crucial thing you have to understand is that if I have a duplicate value in here, let's say I have two fours. If I run this again, the second four is going to disappear because every value in here has to be unique and Python is going to get rid of any value that is duplicated. Let's say duplicate values will be exterminated. All right, but other than that, we can do quite a few normal things with a set. For example, we could print the len of my set that is not a bracket Let's run this now and we know this set has a length of four because we have four elements inside of it because we get rid of the duplicate values. What you can also do is to use methods and sets do have quite a few. One that is fairly popular is you can add another value and in here you just add as an argument the value you want to add and if you run out of this now we have a five added at the end of the set. Along the same lines you can also remove a value and let's say I want to remove the two in here. If I run this now, we don't have a two in the set anymore. For the full list of all the methods you have available, let's use a different website. This time I'm using a website called geeks for geeks This one is also quite good for Python and I do want you guys to get used to looking at different websites. They all do very similar things, but slightly different. So it is a really good idea to understand different ones. All I really did was I typed Python set methods into Google and there we have W3Schools, we have Programmis, we have geeks for geeks and we have the Python documentation. These are the four that usually come up in Google that tell you all you need to know about specific parts of Python. In here, if you scroll down, you have a whole list of all the methods you could be using. The one you have just seen was add and this one adds another value. And in here, well, you have a lot of different stuff you can work with. And the list really isn't that long. It should be fairly easy to work with. Now, there's one thing that is quite limiting for sets and that is that indexing and slicing does not work. I guess let me put these two print statements at the top and now I want to print my set and then the one with the index zero. If I run this, we are getting an error and the type error we are getting is set object is not subscriptable, which is a Pythonic way of saying that you cannot use indexing for a set. As a matter of fact, there actually isn't a really easy way to pick one element from a set. The one that gets closest to it is to use the pop method. Let me comment this one out and instead I want to have my set and then use the pop method. If I run the code now we are getting a one or the first item inside of the set. However what this one is doing if I print the set after this operation. The one has now disappeared. The reason being that this pop takes the first item from the set, returns it and then removes it from the set. 
If you call this multiple times, at some point your set is going to run out of items. Which again, very often is not what you want to do. Sets are not designed for indexing or generally to pick items from them. The actual use case is something entirely different. I'll cover that in a second. But first of all, we could actually do a really interesting exercise just in the middle of this. And the exercise I want you guys to try is to use type conversion to get one item from the set by index. Basically what that means is you should try to convert this set into another data type and then on this data type get the index. The main thing I want you guys to take away from this is that you can very easily change the data type of something in Python and then use different methods or different operations. So see if you can figure this one out. We know that we cannot take the index of a set. This one just doesn't work. However, what we can do is get the index of a list. So what I can do is convert my set to a list and then from this list, I want to take the index. Meaning if I run this now, this one is going to work. I get the first index, I could get the index at one or any other index. This is now going to be a list that we can work with. If I remove the indexing and show the entire thing that we are getting is, well, it's just a list that came from the set. And this is also non-destructible. We are just doing this for this one print statement. Outside of it, the set is going to remain a set. We are not changing the entire variable. Just for this one line, we are changing the data type for a very specific purpose, which is what you are going to do very often as a programmer. Meaning this is something you definitely want to get used to. And that way you would select different values from a set, although that really isn't the idea of a set. But I guess let's talk about what the actual purpose of a set is in Python. And what they are supposed to do is being used for comparison operators. Sets are incredibly good at that. There are a lot of ways to check if two sets have values in common or if they have different values. For example, what we could be doing is set one and check if there's a union with a set two. And that way we are getting all of the shared elements. Another way, we we'll would be looking at the intersection between two elements, and now we only get the values that are present in both data sets. There are actually quite a few more. Let's go through a couple of them. Let me add another comment for another section, and let's call this comparison operators. And in here, to keep things a bit cleaner, I want to have two more sets. Set one and set two that do share some values and everything else I want to comment out so we are not going to get confused. What you can do, for example, the one we have seen already, I can print set one and then union and set two. If I run this now, we essentially merge these two sets. I suppose an operation that is a bit easier to see in terms of what's going on is the intersection method. If I run this one, we are now only getting four because four is the only value that is shared with set one and set two. Any other value disappears because they are not shared by the two sets. A really good way to think about it is to use Venn diagrams. This one is set one, this one is set two, and let me draw two circles. And set two would be the other circle. What intersection is doing, this one here, is it only finds the shared values between the two. Union got all of the values. And the third operation we could go, for, we can have set one and the one here is difference. Again, I want to check with set two. And this looks like a typo difference. This fits better. Let's run this now. And there we go. Now we only get the values one, two, and three these three here. We are getting this area here now, where we only get the values that are not present in set two, which specifically here means that four is disappearing. And those are the main comparison operators. That being said, there are a few more. There's a different way to use these methods. 
and those are going to look slightly weird. For the union, instead of writing union, we could do set one, then I think this is called a pipe operator, and then set two. Let me comment out the other two lines so we're not getting confused. If I run this now, we get the exact same outcome. Along the same lines, intersection, we could replace with the end character. So set one and set two. If I run these two, I am getting four. We are only getting the values shared by both sets. And finally, difference, we could access with set one minus set two. And if I run this, we are again getting the same values. This one may look weird, but it actually makes a lot of sense. We are basically taking set one and we are subtracting all of the values from set two. If they exist, they are going to remove the value for in this case, if they don't, we're just going to ignore them. Now, that being said, these operators or sets in general, you are not going to see all that often. They are very rarely used. List tuples and dictionaries are the really common one and sets you only really use when you do some more data oriented stuff. All right, now with that, we are nearly done. I just want you guys to do an exercise. And for the exercise, I have a long list. I'm not even sure how many numbers are in here, but there are a lot. And what I want you guys to do is to use a set to figure out if this list has duplicate values. Try to figure this one out yourself. It's a really common operation that is incredibly useful. I have added a comment to explain what the exercise is going to be, but it actually isn't all that difficult. The function you want to use here is len. And right now, if I pass the list in here, I know we have 34 items in there in total. Let me comment out the earlier stuff so we're not getting confused. We have 34 items inside of this list. How we can use this is we know if we are creating a set. So I want to create a set from this test list. Since a set cannot have any duplicate values, if the length of this set is shorter than the length of this original list, then we know there are going to be duplicates inside of this list. Which means if I run the len method on this, run both, we are getting 26, which means we have quite a few duplicate values in the original list. If you want to do this a bit more fancy, you could also do, I guess, let me put this on a separate line. You could print len of the test list, then the comparison operator. I don't think we have seen this one yet, but this checks if two values are equal to each other. And then we have len of the set of the test list. And if I run this now, we are getting false. And if this is false, we know they are duplicate values. With that, we have all the important stuff for a set. Although keep in mind, sets are fairly rare in Python. You would only really use them when you run something that requires a lot of data work, like running a database or doing data analysis. For anything else, like making a GUI or making games, they really aren't used that often. So don't worry too much about them for now. When you actually need them, you can learn about them in more detail.